If you're building a social media or chat app, having real-time user presence is very likely a critical feature. Fortunately, the Firebase real-time database makes it very easy to determine whether or not a client is connected to the database. In today's video, we'll use this functionality to build a present system that will show whether a user is online, offline, or away. Hey, if you're new to the channel, like and subscribe, and make sure to follow along with the full source code on Fireship.io. The first thing that I want to point out is that there are a lot of different edge cases when building a present system. In today's video, we'll look at five different situations that the user can be in. If they're signed in and using the app, they should be online. If they're signed in but the app is closed, they'll be offline. But if they're only on a different browser tab, then we'll just set the status to away. Then in scenario number four, the user might be signed out but still have the app opened, in which case the connection will still be active because Firebase tracks the connection to the device and not the authentication state. And if they're signed out and the app is closed, then of course the status should be offline. Now let's take a look at the database model that we'll use for this. We're in the real-time database and we have a node called status. Then for each user, we'll create a node based on their user ID, which contains the status itself and also a timestamp for when it was changed. Now let's look at how we consume this data from the front-end application. On the left, we have the actual user. And then on the right, we just have an incognito browser to observe the changes in the state. When we log in on the left, you'll see that the browser on the right also gets an updated status for the user. If the user on the left then switches to a different browser tab, the status will update to away. I just had to check my MySpace for a minute, but when I flip back, it will immediately go back to online. Now, if I close the browser tab on the left, it will set my status to offline, even though I didn't technically sign out. So the general idea here is that we're listening to state changes to the user's connection to the database, as well as their authentication state, and then updating the database in response to those events. And you may have noticed that we're using the real-time database and not Firestore. That's because Presence is not currently supported in Firestore. Hopefully it is in the future, but for right now, you can set up a cloud function to mirror this data in Firestore if you really need it there. Now we're going to jump into the code, but first you should have Angular Fire installed in your Angular project. And it's also a good idea to have a user authentication system in place. I'll show all the relevant code in this video, but if you haven't already watched one of my previous user auth videos, I recommend doing that first. The first thing I'm going to do is generate a service called Presence, and this will handle all of the business logic for this feature. If we go into the app module, you can see that we're importing Angular Fire Auth and the Angular Fire database. I have Firestore in here as well, but that's not necessary for this feature. Then the last setup thing I'll do is generate a component called User, which will consume the actual status from the database and handle the presentation logic in the UI. The bulk of the work will be done in the service, so let's go ahead and start there. First, we'll import Angular Fire Auth and the database. And then we have a few things here from RxJS that you'll see in use here in a minute. And just as a reference, I've commented in the five different states that the user might be in. From there, we'll go down to the constructor and we'll inject Angular Fire Auth and the database. And we'll set up a few global subscriptions here. We'll define these in just a minute, but basically we're going to listen to the user's auth state. We're also going to listen to an on disconnect hook, which allows us to determine when the user has disconnected from the database. And we'll also determine if the app is visible using the browser's visibility API. In order to maximize reusability and readability, I'm going to break everything down into a couple of small methods. The first one is get presence, which is just wrapping the database object observable so we can listen to the user's status based on their user ID. The next one is get user, which is just wrapping the Angular Fire auth state, but returning it as a promise. This is really useful when you have a lot of updates to do because you can use async await in your methods. We just take the auth state observable, pipe in the first operator to complete the observable, and then convert it to a promise. The next method will perform the actual database write to set the presence. It will take the status, which is either online, offline, or away, and then the first thing it will do is get the current user based on the auth state. If the user is logged in, then we'll go ahead and make a reference to that object in the database, and then we'll perform an update on it with the new status. It's also a good idea to set up a timestamp here so you know when the last status changed. You could just use a JavaScript date here, but then that timestamp won't be consistent across all of your clients. What we'll do instead is set up a getter to get the Firebase server value timestamp. This just tells Firebase to set the timestamp server side so you're not relying on your client's JavaScript date to set it. Now we're going to start writing out the methods that can actually perform the update to the status reactively. The first one is update on user and it's primarily responsible for setting the online status. The real-time database has a special location called info slash connected, which will return a boolean true or false if a device is connected. We'll take this initial value and then map it to online if it's true or offline if it's false. So now we can determine if a device is online or offline, but we need to connect it to a user ID. For that, we're going to listen to the Angular Fire auth state. 
Then we'll pipe in switch map. And if the user is logged in, then we'll go ahead and return that connection observable. Otherwise, we'll just say they're offline. So the end result here is an observable that tells us whether or not a logged in user's device is connected to the database. But we also want to perform a side effect here. So we'll use the RxJS tap operator. When the status changes, we'll go ahead and update it in the database. And we can use our set presence method we defined earlier. So that takes care of the online status. Now let's take a look at how we can use the page visibility API in the browser to determine the away status. This is a very simple API that will just tell us whether or not the document is visible. Now my implementation here is very simple and there's a lot of things you could do to make this more sophisticated. But basically it works like this. If the user has the app open, but the actual document is not visible like they're on a different browser tab, then it will set the status to away. So we'll set up a method here called update on away and it will set an event handler for the onVisibility change event in the browser. Now keep in mind that I am touching the DOM directly here, so this code will only work on the web platform. When the visibility changes, we'll go ahead and check if the visibility is hidden. If it is hidden, then we'll set the status to away, otherwise we'll set it to online. That was incredibly easy, so let's go ahead and move on to the most difficult part, which is setting the offline status. The first thing you'll probably want to do is update your sign out method if you have one to set the presence to offline when the user signs out. A user might sign out but still have a database connection, so we want to make sure that we set them to offline when they do manually sign out. Now the cool thing about the real-time database is that it gives us a hook called onDisconnect that we can use to run an update after the actual app has been closed. Normally that's not something that's easy to do in JavaScript because you can't really run code after the users close the window, but the Firebase SDK can do this with its offline magic. We need to re-register this hook every time the authentication state changes. In other words, we're going to queue up a database update with the user ID whenever the database is disconnected. So we'll make this observable dependent on the Angular Fire off state. Then we'll use the tap operator to queue it up. So we'll say if we have a user, we'll make a reference to that user object in the database. Then we'll say query ref on disconnect, and we can attach an update to this hook. So we'll just say update the status to offline and then give it a new timestamp. And remember, this method is returning an observable, so make sure that you subscribe to it somewhere, such as the constructor of the service. So that takes care of all the business logic for our present system. Now we just need a component to actually consume the data and show some UI elements. Before we get to that, I recommend injecting the present service in the app component constructor. This is most likely a global service that you want to be available everywhere, so this will just make sure that it's instantiated when your app is initialized. From there, we'll go into our user component and we'll give it an input variable of UID, so you can pass in a user ID and have it query the status from the database. So a common use case might be you have a user and that user has an array of friends on their document. Then you loop over that array of user IDs and show the presence for each one of them. And we've already defined the logic to get the actual status for a user. So all we have to do is go into ng on init, then call get presence with the user ID that's passed into this component. Presence will be an observable of that user's status. So we can unwrap that in the HTML with the async pipe, and then we'll set it as a template variable called presence. For right now, we'll just show the status. Again, that'll be online, offline, or away. But you could also use the timestamp to determine when the user was last active. This is also a really good use case for the ng class directive in Angular. This will allow us to use a different CSS class based on the user's status. It takes an object, and the key of that object is a CSS class, then the value or the right side is an expression that should resolve to true or false. So we'll show a green background when they're online, a yellow background when they're away, and a red background when they're offline. That takes care of the component. Now you can put it to use somewhere in your application when you have the user ID in the context. If you want to show the current status to the logged in user, you might pass in the UID like this. Or when you're testing, it's useful to just hard code the user ID in the component. That way you can just open up an incognito browser and look at the state changes from the perspective of a different user. You can imagine how difficult building a real-time presence system would be without something like Firebase. Managing real-time state between the client and server is very challenging, but we managed to get a flexible yet reliable system up and running in just a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. Make sure to grab the source code from Fireship.io. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.